Good afternoon and welcome to AQS Guild Buzz with Bonnie. We're doing this program every Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. and that's on Facebook on AQS Online is our address on Facebook. And this program is sponsored by Genomi America. And today we're talking to Karen Curley from the Homespun Quilters Guild from Waco, Texas. Is it hot there? Yes, it is. Hi, everybody. We're so glad to be with you today and want to welcome everybody to deep in the heart of Texas where the allergies are running wild and it is warm. Oh, yes. And I don't know, it's 90 degrees here today. Is that what you are there? It's 94 and it's supposed to be hotter tomorrow. Well, you know what? Summer started, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Well, so the purpose of this program is to introduce everybody to quilt guilds all across the United States. And so uh, tell us a little bit about the Homespun Quilters Guild, when you started and how many members you have. We started in about 1990 and started with five members and it has grown uh, tremendously. We have about 95 right now. We're uh, you know, we, we're still accepting some members and things like this that we can't have our meetings, but we're still very open. We've got a, a very busy group that works on a lot of projects and does a lot of things for our guild members as well as uh, for the people in our community. Well, let's talk about some of those things that you do that are donations and things you do for charitable groups right there in the Waco area. Okay, one of the things that uh, we have done is for uh, the, uh, let me grab uh, some of the blocks that we have. These blocks right now we're making and uh, they will be given to uh, the church where we meet. Okay, can you hold those off to the side and up a little higher? Oh, perfect. Yes, that's great right there. One, and there's an, a turkey. And these will go into a, a, a quilt that we will give to the church for their uh, raffle that they do uh, during, uh, during the fall. Okay, and then, oh gosh, those colors are perfect for a fall quilt then. Yes, uh, these, are, these are one of the uh, other things that we have done that goes to the cancer center. It's a shawl that fits around for a lady who has had cancer surgery. And if they have a drainage bottle after they've had a mastectomy, these will fit in and they will have a place like this. Okay, and that's through your local hospital? Yes. Uh, we have done a tremendous amount of walker bags and other utility bags like this for um, people in nursing homes. And uh, these are our quilt, uh, quilt of valor Quilts, and we're beginning to start working on some of these that we will be doing. Okay, and you know those panels like that one has in it with the flag? Boy, do those make pretty Quilts of Valor quilts. Yes, kind of get this, but that's some of the things that we're, that we're working on right now. Uh, we've also done pillowcases. We give to uh, Family Abuse Center, to CareNet, we have been teaching at CareNet uh, until the virus kind of stopped our classes that we're teaching some of the ladies how to sew with uh, just main mending, sewing on buttons, doing just general uh, sewing techniques. We've done a lot of stuffed toys that we give to the uh, first responders. They go to the fire department or to the police department. So when they go onto a call, and there's a child there, they give them um, a stuffed animal or a pillow or something as a, as a comfort zone. Sure, yes. Well, those, those are great programs. Now, I know behind you, you have a beautiful quilt. Tell us about that one. This is our opportunity quilt for 2019 to 2020. Um, we're scheduled to give this away in September uh, at our quilt show, but the quilt show has been canceled, but we will still be offering 
uh, tickets if we can, and we will sell tickets and uh, have a drawing in September for this quilt. Well, it's beautiful. Peace and applique. It's a beautiful quilt. Well, thank you. Yes, it's very, very pretty, very bright. Well, okay, so let's just take a moment. You know, I told you this program was sponsored by Genomi America. And so let's just take a moment and hear a word from Genomi America. Hi, I'm Adam Eddy from Eddycrest, and I'm the designer of the Eddycrest Genomi Exclusive Cabinet. This sewing cabinet stands out from every other on the market because it's made out of real wood. So start your next sewing project knowing you can work comfortably in an organized space with the Eddycrest Genomi Exclusive Cabinet. Welcome back. We're going to talk now a little bit about how your guild is surviving during this coronavirus. Uh, are you still having meetings? And if not, what are you doing? No, we're, we're not able to meet right now, but the way that we are staying in contact with uh, our members is through emails. We still continually do our monthly newsletter. We're also doing our challenges and the blocks that I was showing you is one of the challenges of people will be making blocks. They will send them in. We will post them on, uh, on an email and we'll vote to see which block is the best. And that person uh, gets a prize for that. Uh, we also are doing uh, through our membership box. We have a, a box that we have, we give away each month to our membership. And if they send me something for the newsletter that they've been doing during this time, then they have an opportunity to win the box. And when you are, this is very exciting. The ladies think this is, I mean, it's like uh, Christmas when you, you <laughs> take out. You never know what's going to be in the box. This month is dedicated to June Father's Day. So we have fat quarters that uh, you would work on making a man's okay. uh, quilt. There is a little, a magnet. There's little box, little boxes to put things in. And so do people donate those to you for the boxes or do you, or do you have a fund that you go out and purchase them? A little bit of both. We have uh, two of, of our quilt uh, stores here in town that donate various different things on and off. And the uh, Joyce that puts these together does a lot of hunting here and there and she finds a good bargain. She will get things uh, for, for the box, but there's, there's a lot of, it's a tape measure. Gosh, that's full of all kinds of goodies. Uh, the little clips that go for the quilt. There's a little book, uh, a pen, and this is, uh, there's a ruler. Does this make sure that you get quite a bit of, of information to go in your newsletter when you give this box away each time? Well, this is the first month that we have done this. So we will see. Uh, last month I asked for various different things, you know, tell what you've been doing. And I got uh, quite a few pictures and quite a bit of information from, um, from our members on, on what they were doing. So it's kind of a, a fun way to, to keep, uh, keep things going and keep people interested. And also to, we're keeping them going with our challenge. We have a challenge that's uh, our gill activity. It's what is summer to you? And they're supposed to do something that relates to what is their summer, what summer means to them. One of our activities that we've had before uh, was what is your best childhood memory? And this is the quilt that the lady made. Ah, uh, playing dress up. Yeah, playing dress up. Of her <laughs> shoes that she used to wear of her grandmother's. <laughs> Cute. This Cute. is one of the challenges. So it's, it's kind of a fun thing that we continue to do. We also have what we call a sunshine and shadows, that if someone has a happy event or if there is a, a sad event in a family, they will email me. I will send that out to the guild members with that person's address 
and uh, people can send cards then to that person. So they, they kind of have a way of keeping up with everyone to know what's going on in their lives and how, you know, share a little comfort or share a little happiness. Great. Now, I know you told me about a program that you do where you teach some basic techniques. Yes. Our uh, guild meets at 6.30, <clears throat> but about 6 o'clock, I start what we call Meet for the Technique. And in that, we teach various different little techniques. It may be how to make um, flying geese, the five different ways to do flying geese. We've taught about how you would put a sleeve on a quilt. Uh, one of the things that I like to do, like I say, I like to think out of the box. I teach some little unique things that we could do. What you could find that you don't find in a quilt store that you could use for quilting. One of the techniques that we came up with is this jar. If you're sewing and you have a large spool of thread and it won't fit on your machine and you do not have one of the little stands that this fits on, a quart jar, put the thread in, put the lid with the hole, run your thread through the hole, set it by your machine, run it through your tension and it works just as well. That would be really handy, especially if you're having to change threads and you've got several of those spools. You could line them up along the back edge of your machine then, couldn't you? You could, you could do that. And one of the little uh, techniques too, is that if you go to your husband's favorite hardware store, some of the things you could find. If you're traveling or you're working and you need extra light, how about a snake light? You can put it around, you can change it, you can move it around, whatever you need to, to do, and that gives you a little extra light. That's handy. Also, you can find one of these. This is a headlight that fits around the top of your head. So when you're looking down, you could aim. Uh, that's another little item you could find. Uh, another little thing at your hus favorite husband's hardware store is a cute little screwdriver, uh, screwdriver <laughs> that you can take and it fits in real easily to undo the screws. And it has a handle on it that's big enough you can hang on to it easily. Right. Another thing you could use is the little erasers like you get to go on your pencils. You can use those, put them on the screws, and it's really handy to undo the needle uh, if you're changing the needle. I have not tried that. I'm going to try that one. That's a good idea. And then another thing that I, I really, really love, I use a lot of, are the dental picks that you can find those at your at uh, hardware store as well. And so you use those to thread your needle? Use them as uh, to, to guide it, to pull threads up. If you lose your threads underneath your needle, especially if you're using the monofilament, sometimes that gets a little lost. Yes. A little hook inside there helps you to grab and pull that uh, thread forward. Well, you just have all kinds of really good ideas. So it, it, it makes it fun, it makes it interesting, and it just kind of brings a little bit of, uh, of difference to, uh, to something that you're doing. And you know, sometimes it just takes one person. I know one of the things I've gotten from the hardware store is they have a magnet on the end of a telescoping rod. Yeah. And they're not very expensive, but if you have to pick up needles or pins off the floor, it's a great tool. Another thing you can find is this magnetic bar. Oh. If you want to take this, put it up on your, your wall, take your cutters, <gasps> fit to it, your scissors, anything magnetic, it makes it very easy to grab. And it has a hole at either end for you to hang it? Yes. Okay. Golly, that's a great idea. Lots of, lots of little fun things and um, you know, that, that we enjoy doing that we probably wouldn't think about unless we're really kind of, you know, let's think out of the box a little bit. And that's kind of the things I do. I think that's what makes quilting fun. Well, uh, now I know you have a website. Uh, can you tell us how people, if they were in the Waco area and wanted to come to a show, how would they find that information? If they were to log into WacoHomespunQuiltGuild.org. .org. Yes. 
it would bring up uh, the website and also they could go to uh, Facebook with Waco Homespun Quilter Skill. Uh, we have a face and we have Instagram. Okay, so all of Also, us. they could email at gillnews at hot.rr.com. Okay, so that's how they can send an email to you. If they're going to be in the area, I would encourage them to do that. You, uh, you accept guests at your meetings? Yes, and if anyone is in the Waco area on the third Monday of each month, once we get our meetings going, we welcome anyone to come and join us. We have uh, speakers throughout. Sometimes we have some of our guild members do our uh, presentations. And uh, we have uh, workshops that follow our guild meetings uh, the next day. Uh, we also have one of our guild members who teaches several of our workshops. Well, so now you've told us about not having meetings now. Have you been doing any meetings using Zoom or something on the internet? No, we haven't. Basically, uh, just staying together with sending emails and sending updates and things like that. Well, how about making masks? I think we all have been making masks. Has your guild been making some face masks? Yes, we have. Uh, a lot of our ladies have been making. We have logged in 2,157 masks with uh, 1,839 community service hours. We have two ladies who have been working with a group and together they have made 4,010 masks. Wow. So we have, uh, we've made a lot of masks and sent to various different people, families out of town, in town, and provided some for various different organizations around. Well, I think we've all had our sewing machines buzzing, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> okay, so um, we don't know when you, you'll be able to meet again. Uh, so are there any other new things that you think you might do between now and then? Right now, we're really not sure. We're trying to look to see if we can have maybe an outdoor board meeting where our board members can get together and kind of discuss some ways that uh, our guild can continue to uh, be active and be, t be together, but not together until they totally release things and, and uh, our, our guild members feel very comfortable about coming to an enclosed closed area. Okay, well, that's great. And so before you leave today, I hope that you'll go to quiltleak.com slash guildbuzz and on that site, you will find a place that you can register for a Janome sewing machine. And that machine is a Janome HD9 Professional. And it has a value of $2,300. Somebody's going to win it. So be sure that you all enter. And I'd encourage, you to, er, encourage your guild members to enter it as well. Anybody can enter. Uh, we also have a survey. And that survey will change from time to time. So as you watch these programs, I hope you'll go in and take a look at it. Uh, right now, our survey is about when you might want to start attending a live show again. We're trying to get some feedback from you on that. But we'll change that up from time to time. And then, of course, you've talked about the Quilts of Valor. Uh, people can always work with Quilts of Valor. And you can go to their website, which is QOVF, which stands for Quilts of Valor Foundation.org, and you'll find all of the information about what size the quilt should be, some free patterns that you can use. If you only make blocks, they're trying to collect 20,200 blocks or something this year uh, to, be, to go in quilts that will go to um, veterans for the Quilts of Valor program. You make pillowcases in your guild, and AQS has been working with American Patchwork and Quilting, who started that one million pillowcase challenge. All of those pillowcases get donated somewhere in your local community, and I would encourage you, if your guild is making those, to be sure to go into the American Patchwork and Quilting website and register your quilts. Uh, they're getting close to a million pillowcases being made be fun to be the one that makes that one millionth one, wouldn't it? That would be great. Yes. And so, um, uh, of course, we want you to join us back here on Wednesday afternoons. Each week, we will be interviewing someone from a different guild. 
and Karen Curley. I want to thank you and the Homespun Quilters from Texas for being our guest today. We and thank you and we appreciate it. We've loved it and uh, excited about it. Thank you. Well, and I hope that you, you see I'm wearing my mask as my jewelry. I hope that you will wear your mask because my mask protects you and your mask protects me. And I want you all to stay safe and we'll see you again next week at three o'clock on Wednesday.